there's so much um, stigma around physical violence that I had trepidation about bringing it up. And I was so surprised and warned by the, the, the president of, of, of the school said, I thought he would say, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna touch this issue. He said, this is exactly what the school of this caliber should be uh, uh, focusing on in the photography department, not landscapes and flowers. Hey, welcome to a very special edition of the Q Agenda. Of course, we're adapting with the times, but nothing's gonna stop this incredible conversations that we're used to having here. I'm super excited today to be having a great hot topic session with my girl, Juliana. Juliana, como estas? I'm good. We're out of 2020. Let's hope 2021 is bigger and better and not the crazy mess we just went through. <laughs> Absolutely, and so much to talk about already because it's been insanity, craziness. Um, obviously, I wanted to pick your brain, um, starting with the Trump family did not miss a beat to Trump Jr., Donald Don Jr., to talk about the trans community. And he was fanning the flames with the whole concept of, you know, trans people and trans youth being involved in sports. And that's how he was motivating people to like, get angry and to go up in an uproar. A lot of trans women who are proud sex workers as they have the right to be, can tell you the number of Republican politicians who are their number one clients. And it's those same politicians that try to write these legislations against us. And it's, I, it pisses me off. But. Oh, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. They're, everybody's talking about Trump's Twitter account being taken away. I think that Lindsey Graham should be shaking because he's going to get his Grindr account taken away. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> but what is the big deal with, um, uh, why would they bring, you know, the trans issue to the forefront that day? What's um, important? Am I missing something? What's so important about it? Or why are people, are people that angry? It's, it's, it's truly just pick, it's, they're just high school bullies. They're picking on the most marginalized group in society. Um, they're, they're doing what they think is right based on their, their pockets and what their, their contributors and supporters believe in, you know, the very, very, very religious ring white, or, um, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, <laughs> that, the right one, yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day, like you have to remember, they tend to forget the separation of church and state when it yeah. comes to these issues. That has gone completely out the window at this point. Completely out the window. Um, everybody obviously is entitled to their beliefs and their faith, but um, nothing should become or nothing should come in between of someone's basic human rights. Now, in the topic of trans people in sports and trans youth in sports, there is a beautiful, amazing documentary um, called Changing the Game that is exactly on this. It follows a group of um, high school trans athletes um, who are very in the top of their um, sports. And you learn a lot about um, the struggles they face and the discrimination and how much people want to ban them from participating in sports. And I will say like, yes, there are many studies that have been done um, um, specifically on trans people in sports and hormones. And not wow. only that, there are cis people who have advantages over other cis people Think of it like a major NBA player and their child grows up with private coaches and their dad already being an NBA star and the money to train their entire life and, you know, play against the best people. That's an advantage compared to the person who comes from a farmland in Oklahoma who has to like play against themselves because of there's course. a major team <laughs> on them. That's an advantage. There are people who have medical or, or like women who have cis women who have medical conditions that make them produce more testosterone than the average cis woman. That's an advantage. There are gonna be advantages across the line. Um, and especially when it comes to trans youth, just let them play. It's a sport. Yeah. Let them play, let them participate, let them have a passion, let them live. 
oh, it gets me so upset. No, you know, and it's as simple as that. And it's like, again, you know, why we have these conversations. And I, I thank you because, you know, that's a big uproar about trans people and sports. And in two minutes, you broke it down into an explanation that makes absolutely perfect sense. What do you think would be the right message to send to this community that is attacking and that keeps on persisting, that there's a disadvantage and you know, that uh, we need to, again, keep on raising the subject. What's, um, what, what's your final words? My message is to truly do the research. Don't just listen to a hate speech from Donald Trump Jr., who you already know is completely against anything the trans community is doing. They, he's even against us just purely existing. So don't, don't listen to him. If this is a top you're, you're truly concerned about or truly worried about because your child's in high school and playing in sports, truly do the research, watch Changing the Game documentary, get to know some trans athletes. And just remember, especially when it comes to people in high school, these are kids. Exactly. Let kids enjoy their youth. Let them have a passion. Let them play a sport. It's a simple as that. Just let them be. And we have a great show today for you. So when we come back, we have more right here on The Q Agenda. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, I'm Liana, and we today have a very special interview for you on The Q Agenda, welcoming to our stages by way of our living rooms. Sorry, you don't get the whole diva treatment because we have a diva treatment in studio but maybe <laughs> oh, after corona's over i know you, have to you, come back. you look great <laughs> you do you do but uh, i want to welcome uh, i introduce you to our viewers everyone this is a uh, brian uh brian thompson hello <laughs> <laughs> it's like what's he gonna do uh yeah uh man uh, have you i we're so lucky uh first of all to have you here with us brian thank you so much uh for joining us um thank you know you. uh you you're sort of like a jack of all traits from what i can understand <laughs> for sure thank you first of all um as my grandpa would say I i'm just proud to be here um <laughs> I, my, yes i am i'm a by trade i'm an automotive designer uh, spent about a decade designing for Nissan and then opened up my own consultancy for the last decade. And that's part of the bulk of my work. So cars that you drive, cars that are starting to drive themselves, um, all of that world of the production automobile is where I live. But yes, I am a painter and um, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, um, I am very inspired as I get older by uh, philanthropy programs that I can start to sort of give back to the industries and experiences that I've had that have affected me. And you've seemed to have uh, really fused uh, your passions here, uh, just sort of with art artistic uh, philanthropy, as I kind of would call it that. Um, talk to us about the Shine Project, because uh, sure. we're so excited to have you to share the mission of that and how that got started. Absolutely. Um, so the Shine Project is uh, a series of photos uh, of gay and lesbian men and women who have been through domestic violent relationships. And they are portraits shot by luminary photographers in and around our community. And what the portraits do is they showcase that inner light that, is, that lives within all of us that can be dimmed by a violent person or a violent loved one, but can never be extinguished. And um, I drew on this from personal experience and I, I wanted to create something that would showcase the after, that moment when your light comes back on. In addition to the portraits and the artistic side, it has a series of resources that people can go to and go, boom, I need this help. I need this help. And it's so the, the, the intent is through artistic empowerment to show the strength of people and that inner light but also to really help people. So you touched on this and you kind of glossed over it like a little like skip through a pond. And I do want to bring you back to it because I feel yeah. like it's the heart of the project. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you have experienced this. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that time in your life and why, how you recovered from that and, and a little bit about that journey? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, um, I, I was in a relationship for about a year and a half, almost two years. Um, that grew violent and um, it became, it ended abruptly um, on, a, on a night where, um, you know, the violence was extreme. And um, getting out of that and moving forward, um, 
it's, I don't want to use hyperbole here, but it was one of the most difficult things I've ever been through. Um, mm -hmm. And I include losing my mom to cancer in that. What, I mean, what I mean is what I, what I felt like in that moment of, of extricating myself from this was what inspired this project. And this feeling that I, my light or my sense of self had shut down mm -hmm. and the desire to get my light back was really a, a growth uh, through this period. Now, in terms of the growth and healing, um, the Shine Project has been so, so surprising because not only has it uh, grow, helped me, but it's what I'm learning is that what I went through is what everybody <laughs> that goes through something like this goes through. And that's the part that's been astounding for me is the stories I don't know how to, I don't quite have the word, the adjective, but it's something along the lines of somewhere between cathartic and um, gratitude mm -hmm. that the, the type of healing that can come out of something like this when it's a shared experience um, is, is very impressive. Thank you so much for letting us into your story because when you come back, I, we're going to dive into uh, this project more. Don't go away right here on the Q Agenda. <music> Okay, and we're back uh, with Brian Thompson. Thank you so much uh, for staying with us and sharing with us your story. Talk to us about the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. Why Detroit? How did you get to Detroit? And why are they, why were they the host of uh, the Shine Project? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, so College for Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan is where I got my degree in car design. Ah. Um, uh, I, I, I am very grateful to that school. It's cutting edge school. They, um, I wouldn't be the designer I am without having gone there. Um, I created a scholarship for LGBT uh, students that want to go study Cardinal. It's a very expensive school. And I think when I, once that relationship had established that, you know, Brian's going to deliver when he says he does a scholarship like this, I went to them with the Shine Project uh, in, in the fall of last year. And I just said, you know, this, this would be a great collaboration with students. And one of the things I'm learning from this project, as a side note, is that there's so much, um, stigma around physical violence that I had trepidation about bringing it up. And mm -hmm. I was so surprised and warned by the, the, the president of, uh, of the school said, I thought he would say, oh, I don't know if I want to touch this issue. He said, this is exactly what the school of this caliber should be uh, uh, focusing on in the photography department, not landscapes and flowers and things. Right. And so wow. The, 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 the portion that CCS is involved in is they are replicating and doing the project uh, with student photographers and subjects. Mm -hmm. And then the professional photographers that, that so, so far I have organized, but will eventually be organized as the project grows, they will give a mentorship to the student photographers. So the students get to show, get to show their work and be exposed to very you know, well-established photographers and the photo established photographers get the inspiration and mentorship of working with the students. All of this culminates in a gallery show with these portraits and they will be sold uh, with the benefits going to the LGBT Center. Wow, that's amazing. And I do wanna to talk to you about why you think there's the stigma though, the stigma. Uh, mm -hmm. Why LGBTQ folks are afraid to have this conversation? There is a stigma when it's two people of the same sex that I have found where you, you, there's a shame of emasculation mm -hmm. for a, a man, if you want, uh, that you've been, you know, hit. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then there's also this idea that men fight, boys fight. It's just guys fighting. It's mm -hmm. not the same thing. Mm -hmm. Boys fight, mm -hmm. men solve their issues by yeah. communication. And yeah. so I, I, I felt that trepidation about talking about it. And what I can tell you, the, the, the portrait that I, the, the kick this all off. What I felt was that stigma. I felt two uh, uh, feuding energies in me. One was mm -hmm. to hide and protect the aggressor from the violence, from his own actions, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you still care. And then the other side is I want to scream and tell my story. And, and that there's a tension in that. And so I finally just I did a lot of meditating and just realized, nope, I have to let this story out. 
yeah, you know, Instinct Magazine did a, pro, a, a feature on this project, and I didn't even know this until they revealed it, that 26% of, of gay women have been either raped or beaten by their partners in violent mm. relationships, and, and, as, and as high as uh, 46 for, for men. Those, mm. those numbers are huge, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and it's something that nobody's talking about because mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, it's scary to talk mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. Because that. And so and what I've noticed is that in talking about it, first of all, mm-hmm. I'm not scared anymore. And then right. what I noticed is the, the, the portraits, um, in addition to being beautiful, and they make me quite emotional when I look at them, but the stories that each person is telling, each time they say to me, I have never told this story and had somebody understand what I went through this is a release. That's the thing about art is that when it can be add to the cultural conversation, it takes off a life of its own. And, and I hope that uh, young LGBTQ kids see that in all our flaws, but then also all our beauty, that we're a community that is working through our positives and our negatives together. And I think it provides a lot of hope um, because as I read uh, that silence, uh, shattering that silence is the first step to empowering other people to uh, demand a healthier, relationship and life and feel mm-hmm. empowered so can i get you to plug your social media for yes. uh, folks who want to follow along the shine project for sure so my, mine is just my boring name which is brian s like scott thompson brian with okay. y all of uh, them but the shine project is at two places so the lgbt center has a website that they've created for it it's lalgbtcenter.org forward slash shine and then we released the portraits on instagram uh as they come out and and that is just to shine through on instagram so like T-O, shine through, great. shine through on Instagram. Uh, great. Thank you so much, Brian, for being so vulnerable through your art today and uh, hopefully touched a lot of people. I know uh, I can't wait to check out the Shine Project too. So Thank you. we'll be right back. You're very welcome. We'll be right back with more from the Q Agenda. And we're super excited to welcome our friend Pedro to the Q Agenda. Pedro, how are you doing? Um, I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, you just recently were recognized by GLAD. Tell me yes. about that. Yes, I'm so happy because eh, I'm a, a, a soy un representante de la comunidad del LGBTQ, eh, y la verdad, este, pues muy contento de, de que se me reconozca eh, por por el activismo y no precisamente porque yo quiera que se me reconozca, sino porque eh, creo que es importante levantar la voz y ser referente de, de las personas que vienen, ¿no? Después de mí. Absolutamente, estoy totalmente de acuerdo contigo. Ahora, vamos a entrar un poquito más en lo que es el tema de carrera en este momento, porque tienes tantas cosas buenas pasando. So many exciting new things, the new song. And I know there's some messages that, and actually speaking about, you know, being an advocate, you're targeting a specific community in a very positive light. So, háblame un poquito de tus esfuerzos. Eh, bueno. Pues mis esfuerzos han sido complicados desde el momento en el que, en el que pues, por la pandemia no, no se podían hacer muchas cosas. Sin embargo, eh, the community LGBTQ decide eh, eh, que yo hiciera el tema de Donna Summer, eh, I Feel Love. I feel like I record the song. Eh, Donna Summer is a big, huge queen in the Latin, in the in the in the world market, in the LGBTQ. A legend. And, yeah. Y la verdad es que me emocionó mucho que me eligieran como el portavoz de de su homenaje este año, a pesar de que no me pude presentar en los prides por la pandemia. Pero la realidad es que a pesar de todo, la canción fue muy bien aceptada y pues ahí es donde inició. Eh, toda esta parte de transición en imagen y que ha sido tan, tan, tan este, comentada. Mucha gente piensa que, que soy una persona trans, eh, pero la verdad es que soy una persona no binaria. Ya me declaré así porque creo que es como, como más me identifico, porque considero que si un día me quiero poner tacones, pues me los pongo y creo que no pasa nada. Y si hoy como, hoy como tal me quiero ver un poquito más natural porque en el día es más complicado ir a una conferencia de prensa en tacones, pestañas y todos los contours, pues me voy más en, en gay boy y la verdad es que no pasa absolutamente nada. 
Eh, creo que estamos viviendo un momento donde esas cosas pasan a un segundo término. Lo importante es que la vida nos está dando varias lecciones este año y creo que si no lo tomas de esa manera, pues creo que no entendiste el mensaje del 2020. Entonces, bueno, no, hay, no, habíamos que, no, no, no había por qué detenernos. Yo me concentré en grabar un EP Empezando con la canción de Donna Summer y después incursionando en el género urbano con Vete a la... My new me encanta song. la canción, me encanta, me encanta. My, my new single is... Um, I'm so excited with that because uh, the, the urban music is... Uh, es, un, es, un, es un género que no dominaba, o sea que, que realmente... Realmente lo, lo empecé a experimentar este 2020 y no, me quise dar la oportunidad porque si no es como que estás un poquito fuera del mercado. Es triste porque eh, también de alguna manera pues el pop, el rock y las buenas baladas creo que nunca van a morir, pero el urbano es verdad que está en un lugar muy posicionado en este momento. ¿Qué nos traes para el 2021? ¿Qué sorpresas tiene Pedro? Bueno, eh, vengo con con muchas sorpresas muy bonitas. Una, le, te tengo que presumir que con todo la, el lanzamiento de, de la serie La Veneno, eh, que es esta gran este, transexual de los años noventas que nos abrió la puerta a toda la comunidad, fue uno de los personajes que fue tan polémico su, su entrada a la televisión abierta, que por supuesto que su serie es un referente también de, de lo que son las vidas que cambian toda, toda una sociedad. Y la verdad es que la serie está siendo número uno, no solamente en el mercado latino, sino en el mercado internacional. Y con el lanzamiento de HBO Max de la serie, pues me invitan a hacer esta, esta versión de su más grande éxito, que es Veneno para tu piel. Y yo pues me metí un poquito en la piel de la Veneno. Hicimos un video con, eh, en, en, con México, Miami, una coproducción México, Miami, con el director eh, Henry López, que es un director joven que está maravilloso. Y quisimos eh, rendirle también homenaje a Cristina, la veneno con este tema. Y también ha sido maravilloso porque tuve la oportunidad de... Me han abanderado mis hermanas, la, las, las chicas trans de todo Estados Unidos como su portavoz en este momento. Tuve la oportunidad de cantar para ellas eh, eh, hace unos días atrás. Y me gritaban, canta la veneno, por supuesto. Entonces, bueno, el plan es también eh, promocionar este tema y por supuesto que viene un, una sorpresa maravillosa que es que me, me, me invitaron a ser jurado de, del primer drag latino show en la televisión que se va a llamar Drag Latina, donde Ninel Conde es la host y yo soy este, pues, uno de los jueces representando duramente a la comunidad este, pues, gay en, en, y trans y drag y todo y la verdad es que pues estoy muy emocionado con ese proyecto. Thank you so much for your time. We're so excited to see what's coming. So much exciting new material and things coming on 2021 as always, Pedro, always breaking all the stereotypes and landing the ground for everybody else and future generations. So thank you so much for stopping by the Q Agenda and we can't wait to see you again.